set time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitted for service aboard. I want you to be attentive. When I say everybody raise up his hand, I look to my coordinators to see who is responding. Who is, I don't want you to take any word as a joke. Is that clear? You are before the Lord. We do as we are inspired to do. And you must respond to show us that you are here before God. Is that clear? That's what we every one of you, the grace of God. Amen. There is sufficient grace over your life. You allay the ache. The ache. And we, the chicken, hey, cheese, I'm a, I'm a produces egg. The aim is that little chick will come out of that egg. Is that so? And it is going to take some 21 days or so before the chick comes out. Now, everything required for life to be formed. You can put down your hand. Everything required for life to be formed in that egg. The food the life will eat while it is in that egg. The water, the little chick will drink until it comes to full age to come out. Everything, the oxygen, all are provided in that egg. So that the chick can come out alive. In that same way, I am announcing to you, that God produced you out to this world everything required for you to come out to eternal life to be produced to heaven everything required for you to go to heaven has been provided for your life that is the grace of God that has appeared to all men you your husband your children and the child that is still in the womb everything required for the eternal life of that child has been provided now that tells you that God is not evil that sees an evil world and still allows you to be born into it no he has made provision that you can overcome this evil world the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men the grace has teaching grace has doctrines grace has instructions yes the manufacturer gives you that product gives you the drugs to take for your health gives you the product to 
be used for your welfare but then he gives instruction how you can use it you can have the maximum blessing the maximum benefit of this product is that so in the same way grace has produced teachings doctrines for you to follow so that you can arrive at your desired destination heaven heaven grace does not stand alone grace goes with teaching some of you you're, you have prayed a lot you are determined to make it to heaven you have cried and cried your voice was heard in heaven and then the grace of God already has been there how will God answer your prayer to take you to heaven he said come my daughter come my son I will take you to the place of instruction I'm going to take you to where they will instruct you they're going to teach you how you can enjoy my grace and make it to heaven how you can deny ungodliness worldly lust and live righteously and soberly in the life qualified for heaven therefore you cannot see the work of grace you know we need to understand the grace of God what it is and how it operates according to scriptures because the enemy of the cross Satan has given different understanding and meaning of the grace of God to men to the church and to her preachers by which righteousness holiness and perseverance in the faith are frustrated abandoned they give you the message of grace the devil came with the doctrine of grace he came with the meaning of grace and therefore tells you draw what is in your hand you can make it he told jesus jump down from the top of the pinnacle the bible says the lord shall give you angels to take care of you and they shall bear you with their hands lest you dash your foot against a storm and jesus rebuked him i said that's not the understanding of that scripture so preachers have given grace they have told you we're saved by grace we live by grace we go by grace we're going to heaven by grace don't bother down those things it is the grace of god don't worry about anything the earring you're putting on the trousers you're wearing as a woman don't bother you're married a second wife don't bother where it's all grace don't bother about all these people talking about holiness it is grace nobody in, in fact it's only by grace that is the voice of the devil he wants you to jump down from the pinnacle and there will not be hands to hold you because that interpretation is wrong he wants you not to need any practical effort any striving any persevering in your faith abandon yourself to all kinds of lust and greedy and, and, and greediness he knows that there's not going to be life for you that's the voice of the enemy and that's why we we want to let you know this truth because by this erroneous interpretation and application of the devil the church and her ministers will are filled with all kinds of iniquities and wickedness this is the reason for corruption the grace of god wrong interpretation of it is the reason for the decay in the church of god you're under the devil put an injection into you and render you stupid and foolish 
Father, you are no more using your brain. You are no more using your understanding to do what you are doing. You stumble at anything. You are drunk. So, corruption is everywhere. But, may the Lord God of mercy, the gracious God, grant unto everyone deliverance from corruption and protect everyone in his righteousness and holiness through the knowledge of truth and let us all say Amen. number one the definition and operation of divine grace the definition and operation of divine grace number two grace and truth number three truth and love now we're going to number one the definition and operation of divine grace go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast grace everybody say it Say it again. Yes. Say it a third time. Yes. Lay hand upon yourself because a, a, a new understanding will come to you today. Lay hand upon yourself and say, Grace. Yes. Let that communicate to you that you will make it to heaven. Yes. What is grace? The grace of God is the kindness of God towards unmerited man. God's kindness towards a person that does not merit it. He cannot, but that's what the Bible says, not of yourselves. Lest if it were by merit, you would boast. Not of yourselves. That's grace. Number two, grace is the goodness of God towards sinners. People that are sinners. Yet God chose to do them good. People that are abusing Him. People that are planning to do Him evil. Yeah, God is doing kindness. It's like there is a man. And the whole community are planning evil against that man. We will kill him. Let him come to us and see. We will deal with him. In fact, we are ready for him. Let him come. And yet the man went to to, to, to I mean, we arrange with the government to construct road to that community to supply water to that community to supply light a community that hates him yet yeah, he on his own sinners yet yeah, he is showing goodness to such people the grace of God is the help of God on a man who desires to do his will God's help towards someone who wants to do his will you are trekking to a far distance and see how long will you reach there and here is one coming with a vehicle and say enter in I take you there. That's grace. You want to go there? I will help you. Therefore, that God, you have desire to go to heaven. In 
your life, how can you make it? In your weakness, how can you make it? Even in the sins of your life, how can you make it? In the circumstances surrounding you, how can you make it? But God came and showed since you have it as a desire, I will help you. You will go to heaven. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever the grace of God a grace the grace of God is the enablement of God over a completely weak and disabled person to live and to do completely weak lying completely helpless disabled even and you can see enablement that comes into you and brings up strength son of man shall these dry bones live they were very dry I said, Thou knowest, I will show these dry bones my grace. I will show them my grace. The Lord will show you His grace. And they prophesy to them, Don't mind the sins of that person. Don't mind her sin, her wickedness, how far she has gone. Very dry bones. They will, he shall live again. And I prophesied as I was commanded. And wonder of all wonders, I saw there was a noise in the bones. I saw a shaking. Bone coming to the bones. I saw sinews coming over them. I saw flesh cover them. Uh -uh, they are lying. They have become human beings now. Only that they are lying as dead men. Son of man, prophesy to the winds. All winds come from the four corners of the earth and breathe upon this slave. I prophesy. The wind came and entered into them and I saw them breathing and they rose up. You are going to rise up. Wherever the devil thinks that he has taken you to that you will not come back to the shame of the devil to the surprise of the devil to the wonder of the devil you will fly out of that place the grace of God is his pardon for sinners his pardon how God forgives sins who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? He will bypass our transgression. He will bypass our sins into the depth of the sea. I, even I, I am he that have forgiven you. I have blotted out your iniquity and shall never remember it anymore. Grace that forgives sins. See how the prodigal son was forgiven. Perfectly forgiven. Wasted the father's resources. Yet perfectly forgiven and in included in the forgiveness is a celebration. The grace of God is God's sovereign choice on a man. Grace, grace is God's choice. Not of works, lest you will boast. How did I become a preacher? Myself? No. Not myself. It's grace. It's grace. How did I come to have this wisdom? This knowledge? How did I come to have this crowd of people here? Come, how 
how do I even have to come to have you seated before me and you're listening to me with pleasure is it of anything did I go to school for this who school or who certificate it is the grace of God it's grace that gave the choice how did she oh okay this is our sister sister Linda now how did she come to have this grace I mean have this ability to know the mind of God to go to hear the voice of God go to heaven how is it of anything of us no the grace that's on his own he just looks down looks down who okay now I'll pick that person there that's all look at my Sambo. how look at it right this morning Jesus appeared to him Jesus wanted to give sister Linda's message a confirmation so that you should know that it was like that and this morning did he pray that Jesus should come on his own God's sovereign choice over your life and this therefore says there are yet things that are marveling the world that will come upon your life only God knows therefore don't count, count yourself an outcast don't say me what can come out of me do you know the person that formed you do you know the thoughts that tells towards you I know the thoughts that I think towards you see at the Lord thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end oh Lord my God you will show your grace over your people you will show your grace over your servants you will show your grace over your daughters you will yet choose them you are going to choose her again you will select her again you will appoint her again you will appoint him again you will open the door for him again of your free will and no man can challenge it grace the, the grace of God is the riches of God in Christ Jesus for mortal man the riches of God in Christ Jesus for mortal man man lost man separated man away and yet God came with great wealth life all things that pertain to life and godliness and make them available for man this is the grace of God now let's consider some scriptures to understand the play of grace in Isaiah I read chapter 65 verse 1 Isaiah chapter 65 verse 1 the Bible tells us here saying I am sort of dead that art not for me I am found of dead that sought me not and I say behold me behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name check your life and see what the Lord is saying <coughs> it could be your case is like that you were not thinking of God at all the way you got saved you were not thinking about it it was not in your plan when you were going to that place you didn't know that you would go and meet Jesus there you just went and discovered circumstances just got arranged and you just go and see God saying here am I I'm ready for you I will save you now uh -uh. but the God that was not looking for you yes is grace just kindness I saw the way you were going I knew where you were going I decided to corner you and wait for you here just because I'm interested to serve you sort of them that's why you see Jesus making appearances to people in various nations various people you see him flying no, we forgot we were going by going to Sierra Leone my wife forgot her Bible in the plane 
and I said maybe God wants to give somebody a Bible somebody who didn't know Bible who was not even planning to have a Bible maybe I, the Lord wants such a person to have a Bible so he knows the process leave your Bible daughter I give you another one but maybe she didn't hear that language so the Lord acted it out maybe I'm just imagining because he can just you can discover a good thing in your hand look at you now he said somebody just give me a cd i didn't even know what it was in fact i went to the internet i just wanted to check something else i punched this key like this i saw the message ah i started watching it eh? what is this one the grace of god. everybody said the grace of god that's it now it is that is happening to every man the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men again look at it again in the book of romans chapter 5 verse 6 to verse 8 romans chapter 5 verse 6 to verse 8 the bible tells us here saying for when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet by adventure for a good man some was even dear to die but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us we were yet sinners we were not who among us talked to God in heaven and said God send down Jesus did we even know how heaven looked like did we imagine how heaven looked like yeah he sent down Jesus grace who among among us told God that Jesus should go to the cross for mankind that he should die in, in respect of everybody representatively on every person who told God but this was done on his own account this was going on when we were yet sinners it's like a child that was sleeping and the mother was busy cooking food for the child preparing everything for the child making everything okay he wakes up and so the food was ready graciously ready everything made ready just climb up to the table and eat mother when did you do this ah mother you got this type of food i'm looking for but i didn't tell you now I the thought came that I should do something for your good, something for your pleasure. You were sleeping, you wouldn't even understand. If I wake you up, you even be crying at that time. I went ahead because of the thought of a mother. So God went ahead to plan our salvation because He is God. We were not aware, we didn't participate in it on his own account on his own accord he went to plan salvation that's why and then here is salvation available like that he said ah go how did you arrange this how did it happen on my own account that's why it is free it is called the grace of god the kindness of god look at it again in ephesians chapter 8 chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and verse 9 for by grace I ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast grace is the gift of God to every creature grace every soldier going to war carries his water every soldier so every man born to this war carries grace 
the kindness of God, the softness of God, the goodness of God, his wonderful approach, a care, just as you say, mother, so caring, a caring over a child. That's what God does over everyone. Doesn't want damage. Wants your welfare, your well-being. That's the kindness of God, the grace of God. Bring it salvation. It's the gift of God, not of works. You do not pay money. That's what we're talking about. This prosperity preacher that is always saying, so seed, so seed before God will answer your prayer. So seed before your challenge will be go, will go. So seed before we pray for you. And they have prayer for those who can so seed for two hundred naira, those who can so for two thousand naira, those who can so for twenty thousand naira, those who can so for two thousand two hundred thousand naira, those who can so for two I mean for two million. So they have their own. That they have frustrated the grace of God they have frustrated the gospel of God the kindness of God that has appeared to all men they segregated it and said it's only for the rich only for those who have sinned to sow they are not preachers of your God the God of kindness that has made this thing cheaply available making things simple yeah, I, I know when a motorcycle wants to carry a woman and he knows that the woman in Harappa will not be able to climb up. So the motorcycle, the cyclist, lowers his motorcycle. God has lowered things for your life. The grace of God. The kindness of God over your life now what is the I mean, what I'm talking about scripture in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 Philippians chapter 2 I read verse 14 rather verse 13 verse 13 for it is God which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure this grace were you thinking to be in this place before the thought started coming into you you started becoming willing it is God that walketh in you were you thinking to marry this your husband before God was the one putting that thought there he knows what you are going to get from that man he knows the benefit you're going to gain. He knows the help that man is going to give you. Or else the help that woman is going to give the man. He begins to put the thought in you. It's God that walked in you. Come, did you know you will become an effective preacher? How? It was God that was putting this thing in your mind. It is the grace of God that brings up salvation to all men. That is putting this thing, putting this thought. Do you know you will construct something so much like this? Did you know you will raise up a ministry so great like this? It's God that put it in you. It is God that worked it, that, that work it in me. But to will and to do. You are able to do? God is responsible. The grace of God. It's the grace of God. Could you have done that? Where would you have gotten the ability? The grace of God that appeared to you. I gave you the strength. I gave you the interest. Did you know that you would leave this and go to the nation where you are now? And see how you went and found salvation in that nation where you are now. See the, how God went to appear to you there or in that place where you are now. It's the God of heaven that began to walk in you, in you and directing you. If you can go here and meet you up there. If you can do this and have something for you there. If you can, That's God. It's the grace. Everybody is covered by the grace of God. Everybody is covered by the grace of God. The grace of God is walking in your life. It's walking in my life. It's walking in our life. It's walking everywhere. We're covered by the grace. We're led by the grace. We're kept by the grace. We're directed by the grace. The grace of God. Can you see? Can you see? If you now understand the fullness of grace, you will say like David, Surely, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. By this grace, by this goodness of God, by this mercy of God, I will surely 
dwell in the house of the Lord. Look at it in First Samuel chapter 15 verse 17. First Samuel chapter 15 I read verse 17. The Bible says and Samuel said when thou was little in thine own sight was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel and the Lord anointed the king over Israel so remember how you went to hide yourself because you counted yourself unqualified you say who am I to be king to rule over these people you run and hid yourself in the bush somewhere so little in your eyes not thinking you were qualified who am I yet the choice of God came over you is grace not of works so it's grace if anybody is challenging you where are you come coming to load it over us here and say you are our leader what's your answer grace. the grace of God is the choice we Mika was challenging David oh I mean you know that he, he despised David and David said it is God who chose me to become a king instead of your father it's not because I did anything no who am I to stand before Saul the king but it is God who chose me so the choice is of God who then is challenging you the choice is of God why are you challenging him why are you challenging her the choice is of God it is not of he that will it or no of he that run it but of God that make it the choice it's God that make it the choice so if the choice falls on you don't begin to say hey, who am I no 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 God I won't do it don't say like that it is your turn it shall be her turn tomorrow yeah. on another aspect is choice so that is it again in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 the Bible says unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ I am less than the least if they bring all of us here and arrange us in order they come to the last person in height then they bring me to compare with the last person I am shorter than the last the shortest person among you that is what God is saying Le I mean Paul is saying less than the least yet is this grace given the grace to write epistles to bring forth revelations of Jesus to bring forth the mind of God this is nothing I didn't go to school for it I didn't contest for it in fact I didn't pray for it it just came God just gave it to me of course sometimes God can put it in your heart to pray on it but at that time you are not involved at all you are not involved again in the book of Exodus I mean the book of um, Numbers chapter 33 sorry Exodus chapter 33 verse 12 to verse 17 Exodus chapter 33 verse 12 to verse 17 the Bible tells us here saying 
And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yea, thou hast said, I knew thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the, of the earth. Everybody, verse 17, let's read it together. One, two, go. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Hmm. I'm talking about grace. The Bible says, for there was nobody like Moses, that God talked face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. <coughs> God took Moses to the mountain. He spent 40 days and 40 nights himself and God, two of them, talking together. Again, another time in the mountain. See the wonders of God that he did through Moses in Egypt, over the Red Sea, and in the wilderness. Now, hey, wonderful revelations. Revelations. The Lord took Moses to the cleft of the rock and said, I am going to show you my glory. Why? You have found grace in my soul. I am going to cause you to know. I am going to cause you to see. I am going to cause you to understand. Only that if it were possible for mortal man to see my face, I would have given you a chance to see my face. But because you have found grace, I just chose to be your friend. I chose to manifest myself. The president visited the land and just chose to visit your house. I chose to sit in your house. Zacchaeus, calm down. For this day, I must abide in your house. So you have found grace in my sight. Then the Lord passed by Moses and proclaimed with all the glory of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, forgiving transgression, iniquity. Yea, forgiving iniquity and transgressions. Pardoning the, sin, the, the, the sins of the fathers. Yeah, and they by and by no means will pass the guilty, but will judge the guilty to their fourth generation. He was describing himself, describing his nature, showing forth his glory to Moses. Why? He said, I will do this thing to you because you have found grace in my side. Did he do it for Aaron? Did he do it for Miriam? Did he do it for anyone? God has his choice. The reason why he made the choice. He, why? Moses will write about God. Moses will speak about God. And all that Moses sees in God, he will faithfully pass through all human beings to all generations. So, he felt, he's found Moses capable for this and began to unfold the riches of God. The revelations of God. Why? By grace. What God has begun to do in your life specifically, He is going to do it more. Because of grace. Because of mercy. These ones that the Lord reveals Himself to them, are they the most righteous people? It may not really be so. 
that's why we're going to talk about grace for service is different from the grace for eternal life grace for service you're you're not involved choice but for eternal life we're going to come to it it has to do with grace and truth that that then tells you you are enjoying grace of god he visits you he comes to you in dream he comes to you in vision he takes you to heaven and takes you to hell that's the grace for service you didn't merit it but he made a choice but make sure there's also grace for eternal life to help you but that one is based on truth you must do his truth perfectly because it is the truth that gives eternal life now i'm going to talk to you on grace and truth grace and truth in the book of john chapter 1 verse 17 john chapter 1 verse 17 the bible tells us here saying for the law was given by moses but grace and truth came by jesus christ jesus brought grace and truth grace and truth came by jesus christ you say what is truth in the book of john chapter 17 verse 17 john 17 verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth everybody said the remaining thing thy word is truth jesus brought grace and the word of god he is the word personified he is the truth he said i am the way i am what again i am the truth he brought himself to the world truth he is the truth and thy word is truth then what then i was saying we say for the purpose of eternal life grace must go with truth because he brought them truth jesus is the truth look at it in titus again chapter 2 chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us the truth teaching us the truth grace shows us the way to eternal life truth is the way to eternal life for Jesus who is truth is the way but grace points the way to eternal life teaching us that denying ungodliness grace has syllables and the syllabus is called truth grace has a book and the book is called what do you have the book in your hand? The grace has a book. And the book is called what? The Bible. The book is called what? The Bible. That is it. Teaching us the Bible. Hmm. Grace teaches us the Bible. You can't grace without the Bible, grace is nothing. Without truth, grace is vanity. For shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Grace teaches us that we 
should deny ungodliness and worldly loss things to deny things to hold on to but that we should be righteous and sober in this present evil world why grace by the way angels are not in heaven by grace because heaven is not an evil place grace because of this earth the earth is a place where if God does not help us nobody shall escape that's why grace becomes essential angels do not put on this our body so they are not tempted as, as a result they don't need grace you don't give drugs to people who don't have, who are not sick so but our body that can easily be tempted is the reason why we have grace that despite the temptation of our body we must still live righteously that's it grace has teaching christ brought grace and truth he said in the book of matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 he tells us here saying and jesus came and spoke unto them saying all power is given unto me and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost now verse 20 everybody are you there verse 20 are you there want to go teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the earth of the world and amen can you see jesus brought grace and a body of teaching who then told you is grace alone can grace alone save you who told you that is grace alone that people are now you are being deceived by the devil the jesus that who gives grace is it not jesus he has also given a body of teaching a body so who is then the one saying where well, you are married to your husband uh, whether you married second wife or third or you were married two wives before you were born again and uh, there's no trouble now don't, don't allow anybody to work, disturb you grace whose grace jesus has a body of teaching he said that we he that joined them from the beginning joined them one man and one woman and said whatever he has joined together god has joined together let no man put asunder and another woman has come in to put that to separate that person that the man cannot have a, that woman cannot have the true perfect love of his of her husband you say no and you leave her alone let them manage all the teaching of christ said that woman should leave that place the teaching of christ but you say it's not easy the woman has become old now how can we do i mean the teaching of christ we're going to talk about the grace later because he brought not only truth he brought truth and grace is that clear so it's the teaching of christ so now when the word said don't bear a grudge against anybody you say hey but the way if you don't know how the person offended me but the teaching of christ is saying you should not be a grudge against anybody he says return back that which you have stolen those false certificates those false claims that you have made get them returned back go and confess those things say confess this thing for my husband go and make this thing known to my wife known to my husband hey there's no more life i will tell you about that later that is on the side of grace but the truth must stand because it is the truth that gives it an alive it's the truth now tell the women tell the men all jewelry should be removed 
He said, what has it to do? The salvation is in the heart. What has it to do? There is a teaching. There is a teaching. In like women, 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 like manner also, that women adorn themselves, not um, adorn themselves in modest apparel. Yes, in modest apparel, with, with shamefacedness. I said, not with braided hair or gold. That's talking about jewelry. That's the teaching. Teaching them. Grace brought teaching. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. That's grace. Grace is not standing alone. God didn't give us only one leg. We cannot move with it. He didn't give us only one hand. There's no way we, we can grab with it. He gave us two legs. He didn't only give grace. He gave grace and truth. He didn't give you only one eye. He gave you two eyes to give you double balance in seeing. Two ears to double your, I mean, give you a balance in hearing. Two hands, two legs, two nostrils. He has given grace and truth. This will give you the balance in righteousness. Not only grace. Not only grace. Who has bewitched you? That's why your Christian life is unproductive. They are teaching you the word of no way in the time of grace. Say, these trousers you are using as a woman is evil. He said, no, leave them. We are in grace. You are in grace. But the grace has teaching. The Lord Jesus said, we should teach you to observe all things whatsoever he has commanded, however small. As small as the wedding ring in your hand. As small. He said, he never gave it to you. He never instructed in this scripture that it should be used. As small as that, teaching them to perfect themselves, observe to do all the whatsoever I have commanded you. Grace has teaching. Pay your tithes. Give your offering. That's the teaching of Christ. Live in love. Woman, submit yourself to your husband. In everything including money including your body including everything you say ah you don't know my husband and that is on the side of grace but there must be the body of truth it is the truth that gives eternal life not grace grace will only help you to do the truth so you can have eternal life the body of teaching must be given to you the body of teaching must be given to you that you should lead you should avoid ungodliness and worldly lusts. Any form in your office, be content with your wages and don't cheat. In everything, you say, but the money is not enough for me. But that's, let's go to the site of grace. But the truth must be maintained. The truth must be maintained. Can you, are you understanding now? That's why the most important thing is not grace, but truth. But then, if you come to understand again, you say, oh, grace is equally needed as the truth. That's what we're saying now. That God expects you, therefore, to be holy, to be perfect, to have no flow in your life, no sin in your thoughts, <laughs> in your ways, in your action. He expects you to have no flow no wrinkle, no spot in your life where in this present evil world he knows your husband <coughs> at least your husband is not satan is the name of your husband satan so he knows your husband <coughs> but then has made up has instructed you leave perfectly in that marriage live righteously in that marriage if you want to see my eyes in heaven submit yourself to your own husbands and husbands love your wives I know how tough that woman is <coughs> how stubborn that woman is yet if you don't love the woman as Christ loved the church you will not meet with Christ. You are not friends. You are not friends. If you don't submit your life to your husbands, as the church is subject to Christ, then you are not going to come to heaven and marry Christ. Because the rebellious
members in the church do not form part of the bride they will not go to heaven so now it becomes hard the commandment has become great great and now it is like look at that wall there you could not see the wall but some of you at the back you can see that wall there and now they say jump across this wall if you don't jump across this wall the boko haram hey you say me i've gone hey i've gone i cannot jump across hey, I can't. don't worry you will jump i said don't worry you will jump this takes us to the place of grace what grace will do in your life what will grace do to cause you to do the truth number one grace will enlighten your mind to the truth because a lot of this disobedience comes because you have not understood it very well the grace of god will make the understanding of truth so clear he will make the truth known to you so that you will not have ambiguity there won't be darkness in your way you will be very clear that's what grace will do why because grace wants you to do you can do it's only you have not understood you can take the way it's only you have not understood there's a way of doing it but you have not known grace will make this thing known to you he will show you the way it can be done he will tell you how others have been doing it he will make other he will show you the examples of others see how this person did it this way he did it this way so he's going to cause you to know i mean he's going to make you know it clearly and know how you can do it number two grace seasons on truth so we may take it happily grace is salt on food that makes you now to eat it with pleasure grace will give you the pleasure of doing the truth that's why the psalmist said how wonderful is thy word it is unto me like honey and the honeycomb how sweet is it to my to my tongue god has made the world so nice that it is no more a burden you are no more saying mm, this is a burden mm. no you are not saying happy happy hey okay why wow. it becomes fine you now come to know the reason why you're doing the truth you have seen the benefit of the truth and this truth becomes fine to do grace is going to season on the truth that doing restitution becomes easy you, you are going to be you will do it with pleasure i say you will do it with pleasure that's what grace will do so that in fact that's what god grace number three grace removes fear or dread of of truth so that you are you can approach it freely and boldly that's what grace does fear is removed you're no more afraid the reason why you have done you have not gone for your restitution you have spent them in fear that's why we say receive grace that fear will vanish i said that fear will die that's what grace will do it's helping you the main thing is truth the main thing is truth truth is the husband grace is the wife everybody in that house is called after the name of the husband and the wife knows the husband well you you want to see my husband oh what is your problem hey okay your husband my husband has told you the husband is the leader you know he's the head of the your my husband has told me that has told you that he's going to sack you from this office okay come i know how you can handle the situation now go back to your husband to my husband go and say like this go and say like this go and say like this when you say like this my husband will smile your termination letter will be removed back from your hand that's what grace does then you the person that goes to the husband and say daddy you know actually what happened is this you know this is you know that other day you know this is what happened you know in fact in favor when i came I, eh, is that so oh i didn't know bring back the letter <laughs> bring back the letter you're free now grace gives you to 
shows you how you can keep truth how you can walk on truth and how you can be perfect on truth great will help you but the main thing is truth if you must fear you must fear of carrying out the mind of God again what would grace do grace strengthens the heart to do the truth strengthens a courage will just enter into you a courage that's why after you have done some restitution you say hey how did I do it how did it happen which way did I do it why because you wondered how it happened how did you get the courage the grace of God that wanted the peace of your life just blew into your heart strength and courage just came into you you became ready my husband where are you where, where are you i have something to tell you yes in fact i need to tell you before